You are listening to Packers Talk Radio Network. Packers Talk. Eddie Lacy, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay, Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice. Hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If the Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signings. Go to WaukeshaSportsCards.com. So we were talking to the commissioner the other day. The other day. And he said, he said, how you doing, sir? How you doing, what can sir? I do for you? What can I do for you? And I told him I need you to bring back something. Need you to bring back something. Football back. Football back. We in the crowd screaming out, football back. It's kickoff time. We in love with the money, we chicken shaking they pom pom. Shall lead us, my honeys, we yelling football back. Welcome to the Two Pack Podcast, back after a lot of time off. We're back, baby! Oh, we gosh. thought we was finished. <laughs> After a lot of time off since the season has ended, off-season edition, we'll do these intermittently as we go along, but free agency is beginning, and uh, that is getting going in just a couple of days, so it's as good a time as any to start talking about uh, the Packers and how active or inactive they'll be in that, as well as many other things, some off-season narratives that we will get to. Both of us have written quite a few things we'll touch on at PackersTalk.com, where you find this podcast during the season, each and every week, and during the off-season Whatever the heck we feel like it, quite frankly. Whenever we have time to fit it, in, fit it into our busy schedules. We don't, we don't stick to a schedule or any type of system because that takes away from the, uh, the excitement. We like to keep you guys on your toes, keep you guessing. Yeah, there's a, so there's a lot of stuff. Uh, obviously, we'll, some of this will be uh, kind of going back a little bit and, and touching on things that have happened until now. But um, to me, I mean, obviously the narratives like, around this team, they, they stay the same as they were a couple of weeks ago. It's not that time sensitive and where everybody's getting ready for free agency in the draft and we'll touch on all It almost that, stays but. the same year to year over the last three years, aside from the intricacies of Eddie Lacy's P90X or, I mean, oh, a bunch of other things that we can touch I on. I can't wait to talk about that. That's such a fun conversation to have, why a professional athlete with every resource in the world has to turn to, uh... Like, the training regimen that, like, average Joes who only have 30 minutes in their day. Hey, like, hey Tony Horton's to. no average Joe, though. I mean, like, look, he's... Did you see that picture of Lacey today? Looking ready and ripe and ripped. You couldn't even see anything. <laughs> it was a shoulder... It was a picture from the shoulders no, up. No, he looks good. I don't think Eddie Lacey was ever questioned how good his shape... He's 3,000 yards. He was in from his shoulders 4, up. 4,000, maybe. I mean, I'll give it to him. He's wearing a white t-shirt. Usually white is not the most flattering. You go black if you want to look slim. The black t-shirt. Is that true? But yeah. I know it's after Labor Day, or is it before Labor Day? Uh, no, it's after. No, 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 but right now, are we technically after Labor Day, or are we before Labor Day? I think we'd be before. I think it's because spring. Because the turn of the right. new year? Yeah, well, I think the turn of, of, of the season. Um, I digress. He's Nick Bornheimer. I'm Alex Patakis. We're not going to talk about shirt colors the entire podcast. Just most of the time. Um, I want to start with this uh, alleged, uh, I don't know if you would call it rift between Mike McCarthy. Like, why? Is, there's always some rift between McCarthy and somebody. First Aaron Rodgers. Now this may not necessarily be a rift, but you know, Bob McGinn reported in the offseason that McCarthy was fed up with the Packers' approach to free agency. That's picked up some steam. People kind of blew a quote from the Combine press conference of McCarthy out of proportion with the... Uh, who knows? We may totally surprise you. Totally taken out of context. Yeah, sorry to cut you off, but what was the quote? It was, we might surprise you this yeah, year in the, yeah. the free agency. Totally, it, that doesn't say anything. The premise uh, seems to be that McCarthy, sitting here having to take the brunt of criticism, sitting here having to take playoff loss after playoff loss, and hear even some crazy say that he's in the hot seat heading into this year. We could touch on that later, too. Um, is fed up that Ted Thompson won't bring talent in. And my guess is, if you if he's looking around, um, he's probably sees some guys who are free agents and sees that they have some cap space and that some of these guys might be good fits. And maybe he is a little bit annoyed that the Packers don't entertain it as much as other teams do. But um, this one, to me, boils down to like the fact that like we're you know for us to sit here and talk about it, we have no idea. We're just guessing. 
So we're guessing how McCarthy feels. We're guessing whether or not Ted Thompson even expects to spend. But my, my greater question, Nick, is like whether or not like if if this is a real thing, what does what, it even matter? Beef? It doesn't matter. Like that let's let's say Mike You're McCarthy on, is fed up. So Ron Wolf a long time ago, and I don't know how directly this applies, um, former great general manager of the Packers, said you never hire your friend to, you know, work with you. And in Did he say that? He did. I didn't just make it up. It's weird because I feel like I work with a bunch of my friends. No, no, no. I know. And and maybe that's why. Like, you're I, so I, mad I at your job. Up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when you're directly when you're directly managing someone or in charge of someone, you never hire your friend. And I said, and like I said, I don't know how directly this applies, but they don't need to be best buddies. They don't need to get along. Ted Thompson's going to do his thing and has had more sustained success than, I mean, that tandem at general manager and head coach has, has the most longevity out of any of the 32 NFL teams. They've got a good recipe going. And it's not changing from year to year. They're, they're continuing to make the playoffs. What are his numbers? If I'm looking at, and I wrote about it earlier this week, um, he's made the playoffs in all but three seasons since taking over in 2005. And those, those seasons were those two weird years with Brett Favre and then the first year Aaron Rodgers took over. Um, Five NFC North titles, and we're not. And it should have been six this year, but the fluke in uh, against Minnesota. And there's not anything with this team that needs to be poked and prodded. And there's always little, little dumb things that we need to adjust in the offseason. Obviously, the receiving core was not as good as it should have been for obvious reasons. But we always try to drum up this. All right, there's got to be some type of beef. And this time it's McCarthy and, and, and Thompson, and McCarthy's fed up with the free agency approach. Well, guess what? Ted, it's not like Ted Thompson is always absent in free agency. Um, no. Look at, what he, look at who he's brought in. He's brought in Charles Woodson, which was the best, probably the, one of the best free agency acquisitions. Underrated signing that year, too. Same offseason. Ryan Pickett. That's pretty active. Ryan Pickett was an... Uh, no, seriously, he was a name. No, I'm not right? laughing. I'm agreeing with you. I, you he just, was a name. I mean, Woodson, obviously, was a huge splash. Um, and then obviously Peppers, and in 2012, like if you're talking about plug and play contributors, 2012 they got two players via free agency who were going to be starters: Cedric Benson, and it didn't work out, and Jeff Saturday. Now there's a lot of other off seasons where he didn't come close to even doing any of that, and, didn't, and basically just didn't touch anybody who hasn't already played in the Packers uniform. But you're right, though he he has shown that he will do it, and. It's only at the time that he believes is right and the price that he believes is worth it. I feel like any head coach, if you're doing your job, wants the most talented players on his roster that he can coach. Sure. Hence, why McCarthy might be, quote-unquote, fed up with a free agency approach because you're bringing in rookies who are unproven, um, so to speak, in at least in terms of an NFL pedigree. So you're going to want the players that can impact your team most readily or, or, or in, the, in the quickest amount of time. So that's what, every, that's what every head coach is going to want. And every general manager is going to want to build his team from within and through the draft because that's what you are hired to do and that's what your ultimate goal is. So I don't think that there's anything unique about this particular, whatever, whatever you want to call it, beef, if it is that, because I feel like there, that type of tension has to exist in every single war room. Sure. But do you, do you think he's right to feel that way if, in fact, Mike McCarthy does feel annoyed, bothered, um, and maybe even a little bit of pressure in the fact that the Packers haven't, you know, taken that leap that, let's say, you know, the Denver Broncos have by bringing in, like, DeMarcus Ware and, and other free agents to keep to leave and guys like that to really go out of their way to go over the top? I mean, I, if I'm, I guess if, if I'm putting myself in that situation... The way I look at it is, first off, Thompson's approach is a is in large part um, like the reason for my success, right? Well, just like let's let's just start there. Wait, like, you didn't do that in McCarthy's voice. <laughs> well, these are his inner thoughts. I don't think like does <laughs> well, he? Well, he doesn't talk. He doesn't think in his own voice. Is he a voice? shower talker? Like some people, like sometimes I have conversations out loud in the shower that I, I otherwise I, would have in my head. 
But that's about the only time I do that. For those who are potentially first-time listeners, Alex has a great Mike McCarthy voice. I'm not going to put him on the spot right now. Or maybe I will. But we won't go there right now, but just, just know it's top-notch. So, do you, like, in other words, the Packers' stability is a big reason why they've been so good and why Mike McCarthy's record looks so great and why he's been in the playoffs every single season since Aaron Rodgers took over as the starter. Um, yada, yada, yada. And... I also think Ted Thompson's like level-headedness is is something that Mike McCarthy needs to realize that like works in his favor because another reason Ted doesn't feel like he needs to go over the top is because there's not going to be a regime change anytime soon. So if they go 11 and five in 2016, right, and they they win a playoff game and they lose in the second round, I think Ted is so like well reasoned and not emotional at all. That it doesn't mean, oh, you know what? I don't know Mike if Ted's McCarthy ever had an emotion in his entire life. <laughs> yeah. Aside from the weird clap that he had in the press box at one time. <laughs> yep, that's the only time. But that, like, that. in other words, he's not going to be reactionary general manager. He's not going to be Jerry Jones. He's not going to be some of these other, you know, guys who, who axe coaches right away and bring in the next guy. So it, his approach to free agency, like, is probably the same as his approach to the guys that, that work directly under him, and Mike McCarthy has been a beneficiary of that. Not that he's ever done anything to warrant getting fired, but, you know, I don't think McCarthy has much to worry about. Like, yeah, everyone wants to win, but it, it almost feels in a weird way like he's caving to the same, like, pressure that is created in this weird media-slash-fan following of the Packers. Like, oh, they got to win now. So that's why he's fed, like, why, why is he fed up now as opposed to years ago? Because they were winning the division and winning playoff games all the time with the same exact approach. He should be used to it by now, right? I think it's convenient that the Packers had no wide receivers to get open this year because of an injury and because they've never, have the Packers ever brought in a wide receiver in free agency? Like, in recent memory? Well, right, in recent... Like, post-Terry Glenn era? <laughs> ah, Terry Glenn, that was... Corn Robinson? Wow. Yeah, I'm talking recently, under <laughs> under Ted Tom. They just don't do it. They build all their wide receivers from within through the draft. Um, James Jones, Greg Jennings... I mean, James Jones is technically a free agent at one point. Like, he was on the yeah, team one. this year, but... Fine. That, yeah, never would have happened if Jordan didn't get hurt. You're it's not like he was a part of the actual plan. So, I think it's, I mean, they could, but they're not going to go after a wide receiver this year either. There's nobody available that would make any sense, but I don't know. I, I don't think that, I just don't think, I think it's all a bigger, or it's made out to be a bigger deal than it really is. They're going to continue to operate as one of the best franchises in football, and no one's going to get axed, and eventually the Ron Wolf legacy will continue in Green Bay because... Ted Thompson was a Ron Wolf guy, and it's going to be Elliot Wolf who eventually takes over, and McCarthy's going to retain his position, and no, nothing's going to... Like, we're so spoiled as Packer fans. Aren't we? Yes. And how many times have we said that throughout this entire time that we've been doing this podcast and for the last couple of years? It's just there's been so much sustained success, and we just always have to... That's what we do. We make mountains out of molehills because we have to, we have to find things. Oh, we only... We lost in the second round on a fluke Larry Fitzgerald crazy overtime situation and a f- coin that didn't flip. And like, there's not when the Packers are going to they're a they're a top or I think they're ten to one odds to win the Super Bowl. They're not going anywhere. I don't know. That's just I, that tangent just basically just <laughs> back on like okay the Packers are going to be just fine. Yeah. All right. Next topic. Um, all right. So all that aside. Uh, free agency begins very soon. What um, what do we think the Packers do do? Can you see anything happening? Maybe it let's 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 phrase it this way: If Ted were to surprise us, what would the surprise be? Because I so for for many reasons, I don't see them taking an inside linebacker in free agency and turning him into an instant starter. I know there's a couple of those guys out there. Um, you know, Danny Trevathan is one from the Super Bowl champion Broncos. It's kind of a popular name now. Uh, Jarrell Freeman is kind of a good value for the Colts, but I don't see them taking an inside linebacker. Perhaps they take a tight end, um, or maybe they make a move like Matt Forte, 
What's uh, what's your if you get to sign one free agent to the Packers, who is it? Keeping in mind, you know, Ladarius Green is out there. He would probably start right away at tight end. Um, Dwayne Allen maybe would start for them coming off an injury riddled year. If this is a complete, like, this is my ideal situation. Yeah, no, you get one free agent. No, you don't get to shape anything else. You get one free agent. Who's the free agent that you're uh, that you're going to sign in this team? Taking into account the fact that you also have the draft coming up, and they, you know, they have a first round pick, and you know they're they're probably going to take the best player available, and maybe that player pl- it plays a position of need, and maybe he doesn't. How do you not take Danny Trevathan if you've got if you've got those? I mean, if if I'm given the pick, he's going to impact the defense instantly, provide a little more stability at linebacker, and he's just like a beast. He was part of that Denver Broncos defense that was the best in the NFL this year, bar none, and just made Tom Brady look foolish and made Cam Newton look foolish, and he would cement that defense as a top five defense in the NFL. You think so? Yeah. And I know you're probably going to do the, oh, plug and play, the we next man up, we don't necessarily need a linebacker there because... Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I just, I don't know if they value it that much to to have that be the position that they actually target in free agency. I just don't, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't... But there's, but there's not like a good, it's not a good free agent market necessarily. I, I, granted, they don't have a, a stretch the field seem, I'm going to create a mismatch tight end, which would be very beneficial. Um, they, they don't have, well, Jordy's coming back and they still have Randall, but they could always use another wide receiver, but where else are they lacking someone? Their team, this team's not lacking that much. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I go back and forth on that a little bit. I think there's definitely some areas where they could just probably use more talent. I think the the deepest crop of talent that they probably have is in the secondary because I really do believe even if they don't bring back Casey Hayward, which he has not been signed, uh, Mason Crosby and Latroy Guyon have. No one else to this point has been. Um, free agents for the Packers still include Nick Perry, Mike Neal, um, do you think Casey they, Hayward. Do you think they go with one of the two of those guys between Perry and Neal? Or I would go Perry them? probably. Um, I still think that there's periods of times where he really just shows that he is a first-round talent and... And there's times where he disappears a little bit, but I, I wouldn't, you know, I think he, and he warrants playing time still. I've waffled on this. I think Perry probably does make the most sense, and I don't like to say injury prone because I don't think anybody is just injury prone. I think that's a dumb misnomer. Like you know, nobody's born with the like the unfortunate happenstance that they're just going to get injured more. Some people's bodies deteriorate differently and things like that. It's just. He has been he's succumbed to more injury than than we would have liked as a first round draft pick, but I think he does have more upside than Mike Neal does. Yeah, so I mean the defensive backs are probably the only area where I would say you know what they, they probably don't, don't even they don't really they couldn't use an upgrade there. I mean obviously in any any position anywhere other than quarterback probably can, but I mean they're so deep there. Um, my I I am still very intrigued. And it almost is too good to be true. But very intrigued by the Matt Forte angle. Um, because I don't know if they're going to bring James Starks back. He's another one on the list of free agents to be. James Starks might be one of those guys who goes to like a running back by committee team where he's going to get more opportunities than he would in Green Bay. And I, I think that if he's not brought back, there's still a lot of room for someone to have opportunity there. Because even if Eddie Lacy comes back in shape from P90X... And he's back to how he was, you know, his second year in the league, or rookie year in the league. I still think that Forte in particular, and it's not just that, oh, I really want a running back. But I, I've always been intrigued by running backs with that skill set. And obviously Forte is a very special player. Um, he's up there in age now. But I've always, you know, I, I just keep going back to the two times that Reggie Bush was a free agent. And I, I, I know that Reggie Bush isn't a great player, but I was always intrigued. And in my head, I was always like, it'd be really fun to see a player like that play with Aaron Rodgers because it's something that I don't think he's ever had. A running back who is extremely skilled in the passing game and basically comes in and becomes your third target in the passing game. Because I think a lot of good passing offenses now, 
use guys in that way. I mean, what the Patriots did with Deion Lewis, like when they lost Deion Lewis, that was a pretty significant loss. They they basically beat the Seahawks by running that offense. Like, you know what? Your defensive backs are great, but we can still get five yards at a time by throwing to our running back. And I think that there's, you know, in this in an NFL that saw less and less deep balls this year and more intermediate, like five, six yards at a time, Tom Brady style offense, where the Packers couldn't seem to find that. I think Forte just brings that element as well as a guy who, I mean, let's face it, he's probably still got a few more productive years left in him. I don't doubt that. He's been he's been very sustainable, very healthy. He has provided a ton of good years for the Bears and is always among the leaders in um, in rushing yards and receiving yards among running backs, obviously. Do you um, think if they sign him, Bears fans are thinking like Packers like the like the Packers feel about the Vikings? Like, oh yeah, you always sign our retreads. Like the Packers just start doing that. But like their retreads are guys who like still make Pro Bowls. <laughs> yeah, they're like their retreads. And I don't really necessarily count Julius Peppers as a retread. Well, yeah, no, 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 you know what I mean. Yeah, I yeah but like <laughs> just like former Bears going to the Packers now instead of former Packers going to the Vikings. I just think I'm um, I just think the Forte situation's too good to be true. It's just Thompson's not going to make the reach like that because he, he's going to be seeking a lot of money. Do you think he's going to get paid a lot? Yeah. I mean, I think he's only going to. I mean, at the end of the day, he's probably going to. He's going to. You know, he's going to take a paycheck. But if I'm him and I and I'm being choosy at, from the onset of free agency, I'm only answering the phone for contenders. I would only answer the phone for two teams if I'm mad for. Well, the two teams that come to mind are the New England Patriots and the Green Bay Packers because. Like, those offenses are so perfect for what Matt Forte does. Right. Yeah. I mean, think of the matchup problem. If you have... So, Jordy would be back. Let's assume he's healthy and he's great. So, already, you kind of have a matchup problem with Randall Cobb because now Jordy stretches the field on the outside. So, I mean, the, the likelihood that Forte would be matched up against a linebacker is very high. Just, I mean, you know, it just is. And... That's a mismatch, that, that, yeah. that, that, and that's one that you can create schematically quite often, and the Packers have never done that. Look, remember towards the end of 2014 how much Lacey started to get used in the passing game? Yeah, he became a three-down back. Yeah, I mean, and, and a lot of it, like he kind of earned that by being able to pass block, and then they started throwing him the ball, and he just started getting a bunch of targets. And that was like... That was kind of refreshing. Now, he was okay at it, but Forte, I mean, like, to have a guy where that's actually part of his skill set, and he's not just, like, you know, has good hands and happens to be huge so he can run over people, like, that's really exciting, man. That's something, the, the Packers have had a lot of great weapons around Rodgers, and he's been blessed to play with amazing receivers. He had Finley, too. You know, they were five deep at times, but he's never had that. And I would just really be really curious to see how that would fit in the type of matchup problems they would Think pass. about the upgrade Matt Forte to James Starks would be. They're both... I think James Starks turns 30, if he hasn't already turned 30. Matt Forte is 30. Um, James Starks has been an integral part of the Packers' offense when he's been healthy. But, man, those fumbles at the end of the season last year were detrimental. Oh, they did a man, yeah. And Forte doesn't really fumble the ball. Um, occasionally he will. Actually, I... Don't know what his numbers are. That's if somebody want to fact check me. They probably could, um, but it doesn't seem like he does. And he's just dependable. He doesn't get hurt, and provides something that the Packers haven't had since I don't know, Amon Green. Even though he fumbled the ball a lot too. But they they kind of have there's similarities between the two of them. Forte is just even more dangerous in the passing game, and to have a thunder and lightning type. Um, combination where Eddie Lacy's a bruiser, even though he's probably like 160 pounds now that he's on the Tony Horton P90X. Oh you see how good he looked today? Did we talk about that? <laughs> so dumb. Um, I don't know why I'm hating on P90X so hard, but it's just baffling to me. Anyway. Because you don't have you don't have the wherewithal or the discipline to do P90X yourself, so you're just taking it out on Eddie Lacy. No, but it's because if I if I were Eddie Lacy, I don't know that I would... I mean, granted, it's easy to say, like, oh, like, why would you need that? Like, I understand there's other things at play there. And I'm not knocking Lacy. I just think it's, like, didn't... I mean, McCarthy's quote sounded like he was frustrated with 
Justin the McCarthy that, always sounds frustrated, though. That's true. Like when <laughs> when does he really sound like he's uh, he's experiencing any type of joy? Um, no, okay. but he's. I mean, like he's he's literally like his running back, a guy who he just challenged. Granted, he's he's responding to the challenge, but he's doing so by instead of like taking advantage of you know team facilities and staying extra to work out here, there, wherever, by flying out. To go work out with a guy that you have no relationship with, who's a television like infomercial star. He's gonna do some shops in his living room, just like your average Joe's do. I mean, like, <laughs> it's 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 like you know, if if Walter Payton went and worked out with Richard Simmons, isn't that who? Is it Richard Simmons? I was gonna say what? Bill, but it's like, what do you, you know? What is this? Like, no, it's not like that. <laughs> Richard Simmons did aerobics. <laughs> Uh, aerobics might be better suited for him. Who knows, man? Like, it was P90X, then it's CrossFit, now it's bar classes, and it's, you know, I, look, let's, it's, it's all these different things. Like, I, it's, I'm just amazed that a professional athlete would be, like, the key to Can we go to back him. to some of those 80s workout videos? If, the, if we could get Lacey doing some of that stuff, that's when I'd be able to watch that. With a headband. Yeah. And, like, a bright, like warmer, bright, like, like pastel y color. Shirt. That's where. That's just like a regular, regular ass T-shirt, <laughs> or maybe a tank top. Yeah, or maybe a, a what a onesie or whatever. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I it. am I misinformed? Is P90X one of those things that you're supposed to be able to do for like 30 minutes a day, and it's supposed to be? It's more to be... than 30 minutes a day. So believe it or not, for a very brief period of time, I know you look at me like I you just look at me like this golden god. A uh, physical specimen who doesn't need to work out. I just naturally have this body. But you know what? Believe it or not, it does require some work. And in college, I uh, I entertained the idea of doing some P90X. Sorry. In my, in my searching for P90X, I missed the fact that you uh, <laughs> tried, tried to I, saw you, I look at you as a god. I, and... I saw you were distracted, so I thought <laughs> I could sneak it in. Um, and it, so basically it works like... There are different there are different regimens each day that you do different things. There's upper body and legs, and you've got like a yoga day and all this stuff. And it's more than thirty minutes. It's not like so. There was a different workout that was similar to that. It was called extreme, or um, it's some type something like that. I don't know what it is or okay. what it's called. But this it there's some weights. You have bands and stuff. But the the concept is you can do it. Without a gym membership, you can do it from your living room, which is funny to your point. Like he has state of the art facilities, and he's working with this guy. It is basically a walking billboard for P ninety X. I'm not. Now. I'm not. Look, I think it's a brilliant move from Tony Horton because now he has a walking advertisement who just happens to play for a team that gets an let's insane make, amount of press. Let's make P ninety X relevant again. He's found the one skill position player who might actually be able to be considered fat. And he's going to turn him into a monster, which Eddie Lacy's already a physical beast. And he's going to benefit off of it. And maybe P90X has a revival. Um, it's all about muscle confusion. Apparently, you work yeah, out you six... Yeah, you manipulate the way that you're... Your it's a 90-day program. You work out six days per week. 90. And if this... Uh, yes. If this um, works out and he shows up in great shape, I'm sure McCarthy won't be uh, annoyed by it. But if I had to guess, he's probably thinking to himself, like, what the hell is this? Like, really? Like, this... Th those things... Look... It may be great, and it's probably worked for so many people, but it just, in nature, they seem gimmicky, and I think it's hilarious <laughs> that Eddie Lacy is flying out in his offseason to work out with that guy, who probably, like, he's probably, you know, on the Today Show, like, being, like, slimy sales guy for the for the thing, and all the moms at home I wish are like, could, I'm getting P90X. I wish you could watch Alex doing the, what, who is the Tybo guy, Billy Banks? You were just doing, like, a... You all know right, what I mean? Right. Like that's what I envision. That's what I envision him doing. I envision imagine Eddie Lacy sitting in front of his TV with this with Tony Horton yelling on screen like push through it, blah 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 blah. Like Eddie Lacy's oh, training with like he's the rude. best of the best, like elite level athletes in Alabama and then the Packers. Like you don't get any more top of the yeah, line. Yeah, but Alex, did you see how good he looked in that white t-shirt? Oh my god, I'm gonna ripped. <laughs> yeah, I can't <laughs> Where did you get this white t-shirt photo? It's, it's all over the internet. You must have been sleeping. Everybody's tweeting it out. Everyone has it. Does the, does the photo go anywhere below it's just his, him hanging out his, with his chest? I, I don't know. I don't know where it's taken. I didn't read into it. I just saw Eddie Lacy. Oh, he looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't like been this in, like 
intrigued by a photo since the iCloud hack back in the... Uh, you can't just aimlessly <laughs> search day. through your, your feed right now. It's not just going to pop up. Just search, just Google Eddie Lacy t-shirt. I already, sh I sh we talked about it today. I showed it to you. Anyways, we were talking about Matt Forte. And I think the scenario is too good to be true. As Alex feverishly searches for Eddie Lacy. Oh, you're just looking for his white t-shirt. Okay. So, this is, I know we talk, we make this big stink about how I just basically am contradicting myself because I say, oh, Ted Thompson, it's not like Ted Thompson doesn't do anything because he brought Wait, wait a in. second. Hang on. All right, I just found it again. This, no. Oh, man, this is terrible because this is not a visual medium. But the, the headline of this on CBSSports.com reads, look, Eddie Lacy looks shredded after working out with P90X trainer. And the photo is a bunch of bros... A bunch of bros laughing and smiling. Oh, we're here well, with Macy Eddie Lacy. And Eddie Lacy standing in the middle, and the picture is from his midriff up in a t-shirt that you can't, you literally can't even see a muscle. Like that could be a regular human yeah, being. That could be the bottom a bottom of his biceps, though. That looks ripped. That looks yeah. like those muscles were manipulated and confused. Those it might as well be a confused muscle. It might as well be a headshot. It might as well say, look, Eddie Lacy looks ripped and then just have his headshot like from his But how good does his jawline look? <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. Uh, anyway, uh, what were we I'm trying to talk about Matt Forte and how it's not going to happen and I contradicted myself because okay, Thompson does do some things. It's not like he's totally complacent, but in your heart of hearts, do you feel like this is a move that Ted Thompson makes? The answer is no. 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 So well, I'm going to poo-poo it. I just don't think it happens. I okay. think it would be I think it would be good, but somebody's going to offer more money. And Thompson doesn't want to bring in someone who's 30 years old and a running back with a shelf life. Granted, he's got the the pedigree of someone who has stayed healthy over the years, but a lot of miles on Matt Forte, and we could probably we'll probably I don't know. Do you think they do you think we re-sign James Starks? No. No, for sure? No, I don't. I uh, I don't. I, I can't get over this photo, by the way. You're so um, enthralled with how good Eddie Lacy looks. It's just, I mean, I don't know how he looks. I, I Like, that's the thing. We're, we're sitting here, like, people are analyzing this picture, and it, it brings me back to the exact opposite in a white jersey where he looked like, you know, a, a, a guard... Uh, like a high school guard who's just like played football because he happened to be huge. Um, How was this just a brilliant PR stunt by P90X? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Did, he, did Tony Horton write that headline? Look how shredded Eddie Lacy looks. I mean, I yes. Nice that, job by P90X, man. They are they are getting revived. I'm gonna do some P90X. I'm gonna bring back me and my buddy Jake Hoffman did P90X. <laughs> I did it for like four days, and I was I got bored. <laughs> But, like, we thought about doing it because it was all the rage. <laughs> it's, it counts, right? Thinking about doing it is just every bit as good as actually yeah. doing it. Um, anyway, so uh, we've moved out. We've picked our free agency. Should we get on with it then? Yeah. Should get on with free agency like the, the Packers are probably going to do? Just eh, forget about it. Let's, let's, uh, let's move McCarthy on. McCarthy and Thompson probably have these conversations just, like, and then get sidetracked and then forget to acquire free agents just like you and I did. We just... Forgot about the topic, and then that's probably how it works, right? When they're hanging out. What do you think McCarthy thought when he saw that headline? If he saw it, do you think he did see it? Yeah, somebody, somebody tweet or sent it to him or something. Probably, I don't know. He, McCarthy, I still don't think McCarthy actually has thoughts unless he's angry or just not. Are divulge. you just calling him dumb? <laughs> not just no, no, no. He has thoughts, but he doesn't divulge his thoughts. He doesn't let people know what he's thinking. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he gets fired up. I don't know what he thought. He's. You said he sounded upset that he was doing it. He's probably like probably thinking the exact same thing. I can't see. I can't see what Eddie Lacy looks like. <laughs> you can only see his nipples. Yeah. I. Uh, oh man. I could only. I could only imagine um, what he actually feels. Just in the in that in that like environment, you know, in the in the NFL, like. Those are alpha males. Those are superhumans. They are they are like basically modern day gods when it comes to physicality and 
Um, I could just imagine what McCarthy's thinking in his head that uh, Lacey's resorting to that. But hey, maybe I'm not giving P90X enough credit. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's a... Hey, don't knock it till you try it. I'm a P90X certified I'm sure expert. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's very difficult. I'm sure it's a very hard workout. It regimen. is. You, have to, you do more pull-ups than you thought was humanly possible, or they ask you to. I took a lot of breaks. So. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. What's the next uh, off-season area we want to get to um, before, uh, before free agency? What do we th- what do we think? Um, how about how about our golden boy and his shrinking window? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, Mister coming Mr. to uh, Rogers coming to a uh, first take near you, right? Yeah, one of those things that they'll start talking about um, if who the is, Packers go zero one. Who is in his 33rd year of his life, which would make him thirty two years old? Yep, Aaron Rodgers. And his diminishing window, and the the lack of surrounding him with talent in his prime, is going to result in the, this entire stretch of one of the best athletes the game has ever seen. It will result in a wasted <laughs> Give me a break, <laughs> a wasted get out of here with chair. window closed. Like, what does that mean? Like, to me, right now, that that the Aaron Rodgers window is closing thing, like. It's, it's like saying, like, oh, yeah, we're all dying. Well, like, yes, with every single second, we're all moving closer to death. But that doesn't mean we're dying. You know what I mean? It's like, that, that's what it feels like to me with Aaron Rodgers. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, his window is shrinking. He got another year older this year. Oh, really? Okay. Like, what, what does that mean to anybody? Like, look at the NFL. Oh, man. This one fires me up because it's like we think that there's just, like, this – this magical potion that he's drinking, and soon it's going to run out, and then he's just going to be a regular Hey, don't knock magical potions. I'm pretty sure Russell Wilson did pretty well in his concussion recovery from a magical yes. potion. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm sure, yeah. It did, him, it did him lots of good against the Carolina Panthers, right? Whoa. Because if that water was really the cure-all, wouldn't you drink it every single day? No, just sometimes when God wants to help him out. Is your, I don't get it. Is your goal just to like to, to annoy me this is now? Fun. Is that is that what this is? Keep going on how mad you are that Aaron Rodgers' windows closed. I'm not mad. Look, I'm not going to deny. Like, yes, there's going to come a day he's not going to be the best quarterback or one of, if you really want to argue that he's not because of the down year he had. But one of the best quarterbacks in football. That day is coming. I agree. But to, because he's 32 years old, doesn't mean that we're we're near the end. I mean, like. Just, just think about the NFL right now, right? So Cam Newton won the MVP. The guy with the next best argument because they went 15-1 and one and no one could figure out how because they're not exceptionally talented offensively, yet their offense put up a billion points. Mm-hmm. Um, the next most qualified guy was Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer has been injury-riddled way worse than Aaron Rodgers has for his entire career, and he's four years older, and he put up an MVP caliber season. Tom Brady just signed a two-year extension, and I am pretty certain he's going to play out the remainder of his contract, which would bring him into his 40s, and he's 38 years old right now. Ben Roethlisberger, right? Older than Aaron Rodgers by a year, granted, but, or by two years, I believe, and is having some of the best years of his career. Eli Manning, three years older than Aaron Rodgers. He just had his second best statistical season ever. And he's got Odell Beckham Jr. And I guess Ben McAdoo should take all the credit. But he's got a great receiver. But the, that's the point. It's that like the, the Arizona Cardinals are a team that's so great. And as long as their quarterback could stay healthy, then they're a Super Bowl contender. That quarterback's 36 and was never as great as Aaron Rodgers to begin with. What do you want a Heisman? But isn't the point that like a quarterback's window is basically as as large as the talent around him? Yes. As long as you continue, like Aaron Rodgers is a special talent, and when he's thirty eight years old, he's still going to be a special talent, and, unless it's injuries that do him in. <laughs> but he's he works out there like he's putting like first off, evolution is coming into play because now people can play in their forties and it's not that crazy. Also, medicine. Maybe even some medicine that's illegal. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm just saying players last longer now at that position, and they don't take as much of a beating. And Rodgers is doing grew from HGH. <laughs> yes, that's what. I'm, well, not no. Again, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. All I'm saying is, like, we're more advanced now. Quarterbacks like Rodgers and NFL players are realizing flexibility. This yoga, that Pilates, this, this, that, and the other. They can play well into their 30s. 
So as long as you surround him with talent, his, his greatness is going to continue to be great, if not really, really, really good when he's diminished a little bit, and you'll still contend for Super Bowls. And you can't. The thing is, you can't even use Peyton Manning as an example. Like, oh, look at the guy who just won the Super Bowl because he was atrocious. Yeah, he was. So if that's just like you know that almost works against you because they won in spite of him. But Brady, Palmer, other Manning, Roethlisberger. I mean, Romo even. I mean, Romo can't stay healthy and watch him come back this year and throw for four thousand yards. And yeah, he's, like, he's suffered more I injuries. Think, than I think Rogers. Romo's shoulder is just gone. I don't even know if he has a shoulder anymore. All right. So as long as Rogers' arm works and his legs don't give out. I think that it's silly to sit here and and say his window is closed. Like, aren't we just worrying to worry? Just like, oh, 32, man. We only got like six more years yeah. of this. Look, I – and I'm – yes, Rodgers' window is nowhere near closing. The Packers, um, I guess, their ability to win with Rodgers based on the talent around him, it's – it, he's always going to be a product of the people you surround him with, and he can even compensate because of how talented and magnificent he is, and we saw that this year. Granted, he did have a bit of a down year, but he still... I mean, he threw two last-second Hail Marys, the likes that the NFL has never seen. No quarterback can do what he did this year, and he is not at his apex, according to some people, or he's... On the descent, or what? It's, or maybe he just had a down year. Yeah, he's it's he's going to be just fine, and he's going to be just fine for many years to come. I am a firm believer in that. And you gave about nine very very real life examples of quarterbacks well, who are yeah, older than. I just wrote about it today, so it's fresh, and I had to get that off my chest. But yeah. I mean, really, like Tom Brady's thirty-eight. He just had a hundred and two point two quarterback rating and threw for four thousand yards. And, yeah. and he does it by digging and dunking. And mm-hmm. he was never as talented. I mean, you argue greatness and rings and everything, but just physical talent was never as talented as Rodgers to begin with. And you can't even argue that he's appreciably smarter because Rodgers is also brilliant and recognizes his shortcomings. Even Tom, though they're not Tom, Brady's, right now. Tom Brady's bedrock in the dad bod. He just doesn't look athletic. He yeah. Really- <laughs> like, give okay, Rodgers is 38. Guess what? Stick Rob Gronkowski with him, and he'll probably be great. Like that's just just find the talent around those guys. Shrinking window, man. Like I, uh, you're I, letting this get you fired up. Well, no, because when the season ended, and we didn't, did we do a podcast after they lost? Yeah, it was we did very, one. It was, right, it was very somber. Yeah, it was very somber. I feel like we didn't talk that much about it, and maybe even back then, in my depression, I was thinking, man, we only got so many more years at this. And then I thought, like, what am I? I'm gonna wake up every day and just think, like, oh, like. Who sits there and thinks about how bad things could be post Rogers when post Rogers is like six or seven years from now? Like it's right. sports, you know. I'm not like worried about my next life decision. Like it's not, it's not up to me. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy it. It's, and it's something I'm probably gonna be able to enjoy without throwing my remote through my television for half of a decade, if not more, barring a career-ending injury. That's me knocking out wood. Or, oh, yeah, yeah I, not just not. There's nobody's here. Don't worry. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, well, you, you don't have to worry about it. He's not going to go Calvin Johnson and retire because he thinks it's in his best interest. Because he's not in Detroit. Just kidding. Well, just right. kidding. Just starting to hate the sport he once loved because he plays it in Detroit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we could get into a whole, a whole other discussion about developments in concussion awareness and blah 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 but that's not that's neither here nor there we've got a lot of rogers left it's going to be amazing i agree packers are going to go team go go sports super bowl guaranteed wow mark it down no please don't i'm just i'm 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 joking are the packers gonna win 12 games i don't know we don't know what they're gonna look like why are you asking that now we know it. <laughs> it's the beginning of March. You know, okay, that's dumb. You know, we know kind of what they're going to look like. We've got a shell of what they're going to look They'll like. They'll win double-digit games. What else do you want to talk about? <laughs> the thing about the offseason is... You want to talk about the draft? Yeah. I think we're a little premature. Well, we'll definitely have another podcast before the draft. Well, we'll the combine is now reaction. come and gone. And we it was kind of uninteresting, like it always is. But there's always a few things that emerge. Um, 
So Jalen Smith loved the Packers. He did. He also doesn't have it. <laughs> he <a> literally <laughs> just said, whoa, Mike McCarthy, that's an interview. How yeah. great of a quote is that? Yeah. Like, what did McCarthy say to him in that room to really knock his socks off? I don't know. Like, he didn't ask him if his mom was a prostitute? Like, is that, <laughs> is that, the, is that the standard that's been set by other NFL teams now? I mean, have you heard some of the things that, that players are being asked? At, at combine interviews yeah it's a real test of their mental endurance and keep in mind some of these kids are 20 like but is that fair though no i'm not saying it is no. like i actually i don't think i've had a formal interview for a job in probably ever i think i had a formal interview for an internship and i'm just trying to think if if in like real life someone asked some of these crazy ass questions that these nfl teams ask like what does a normal person react like how does a normal person react I don't know. Stay composed and probably don't take that job because what person asks a crazy question like that? Maybe. Like, I want to think, I want to believe that McCarthy and the Packers don't ask those questions in interviews, but I don't know how different they are. But apparently Jalen Smith thought that, that Mike McCarthy, an interview with Mike McCarthy was like the greatest thing ever. That might just be him saying, like, literally trying to put stuff out in the media. Like, they, I know they need a guy at my position. And I would really like to play on a team that's probably going to compete for Super Bowls well, yeah, instead Jim, of getting drafted. Jalen like, Smith needs to Texans. worry about walking before before he worries about getting drafted. Jeez, but he's a, he's a supreme talent. Don't get me wrong. But do you take a flyer on him if he's if he's there in the first round? Hell no. If everyone's saying that he might not be able to play at all in 2016, it's I think you learned that lesson it. with Justin Harrell. I granted they're two completely different injuries, and Justin Harrell one almost seemed more. Uh, less risky, I guess, because it was a bicep, and you, that seems easier to recover from. Right. Then, yeah, than a knee, certainly. Absolutely. You don't, yeah, you don't trust a knee. All right, so where's your, uh, let's do this. Where's your head at now, draft-wise, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up this uh, two-pack podcast here, PackersTalk.com. Uh, but position-wise, you don't even have to give a specific player, but, you know, kind of given the way things have been going, because if we were to do this, you know, two weeks from now, our stories are going to be completely different because everybody's big board is going to change and this guy's stock is rising, this guy's stock is falling, pro day this, pro day that. I love the draft. It's really weird, the place I'm in, because I love the draft, but I'm getting really annoyed by the coverage leading up to it. Yeah. Um, just because, like, I think the more and more I, I invest in it, the more I realize, like, we don't really know anything. Like, I think it's fun to study players and try to learn about the game through them. Um, and how it ends up translating, and maybe you can make a you know an, an informed decision on how a guy will be. But in general, like this stuff changes nonstop. So today, as of today, your uh, your head is where when it comes to Packers twenty seventh, right? Twenty seventh overall pick in the first round, the Green Bay Packers select <sighs> Josh Doxson did way too well at the combine to even. You think? I don't know. You don't you think so? I don't know if he'll even be there. Um, see, I don't know. Because, see, uh, don't people really like... So, um, Laquan Treadwell is going to be the first receiver taken. And he's like, you know, by all draft people, it seems like he is the most complete receiver. And then you've got, like, these speed demons, um, like Will Fuller, let's say, of Notre Dame, who... You know, I yeah. watched quite a bit on him, and I was actually going to... So I, I've written quite a few about wide receivers. I've been trying to learn a lot about that position in particular because I'm obsessed with the Packers taking one, even though no one else seems to think that they need one. I, I still believe that. They do. and it, But Fuller was like just a deep ball guy. He's kind of like a one-trick pony, um, catches the ball in his body a lot, but like he just outran everybody. Yeah. Doxon, to me, like is the second most intriguing receiver behind... Treadwell and Corey Coleman. Here's why I don't necessarily love Corey Coleman of Baylor. I don't really know how to evaluate college players at all, let alone guys who play in that system. Well, yeah, Baylor's unique in that they're just their entire offense is spread and throw. And I mean, like they, it's nothing, it's, which isn't yeah. unheard of in college, but they're even more so. They put up 50 well, some again. Yeah, and like they're coached to not run off the line of scrimmage if the ball's not going their way. Because like their offense is so, you know, in a weird way, so scripted that there's plays where they're, they're lining up three wide to the left and it's a screen pass to the right and it's just like a wasted play. Yeah. And then like the next play, Corey Coleman's running a go route and then, okay, maybe you could learn something. But it's like, 
they're not even asked to do things that NFL receivers are asked to do. So it's really hard. But I love Doxon. I love Doxon. Would you like that at 27? Yes. If he falls to that. Okay, let's play this out, all right? Let's say, and I don't don't know if both these guys are going to be there. But let's say you're in a situation where an accomplished receiver like Doxon, or maybe maybe if you, if, if Fuller is a first round talent according to most GMs or whatever, um, most mock drafts have him going in the latter portion of the first round. All right, so let's say one of the one of the first round talents at receiver is there, but so is Reggie Ragland. Just say that. Yeah, where do I? Where would I want them to go? Is that the question? I mean, it basically just comes down to whether or not. The Packers value Raglan that much if he's on the board, right? Like right. if they really believe he's even, I guess. How do how does this work? This is what I would love to know. Best player available, but what if the second or third best player plays a position that you really need? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if if Raglan is the third best player available and they have a really good first round grade on Doxon. Yep. But Doxon would come in, probably the third receiver off yep. the bat. And could either lose ground from there, probably can't really gain much ground from there, where Ragland could come in and basically be like Clinton Dix, but the linebacker version, and start right away, and you plug him in and you don't even worry about it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an ideal situation that you just painted. Um, you, I mean, you answered the question already. You know how Ted Thompson drafts. You said that one of these wide receivers on the board was a better talent, Right. Sure. Technically, let's then, say, yes. Let's right. say let's say on on Ted Thompson's board, he's he's got receiver X ranked higher than Ragland. Then Ted goes receiver X. Even if the difference between them is not that great, like let's say he's got a a nine point three grade on the receiver out of ten and an eight point nine grade on the linebacker. I think the difference between Ted Thompson Ted Thompson and a mediocre or slightly above average general manager is Ted doesn't play for I'm going to plug in play and take who's ever on the board that fits the position that I need because we need someone to instantly impact our team this year because that's that's not what makes him a great general manager he's going to take the best talent because you just take the best football player that's what you do you take the best football player and you figure out how to you know make amends for not taking a position of need because in previous drafts and what he's accomplished as a general manager over the course of 10 years puts him in a position to be able to be a little bit weaker at one position if it means getting an exemplary talent at another position. And that's just how we've maintained success over the years. And granted, he doesn't take wide receivers in the first round ever, but if the, he's if there's a, a magnificent talent like Josh Doxson there, you have to do it. Granted, Reggie Ragland, I wouldn't be upset with either one of those because maybe Thompson values Reggie Ragland better than Josh Doxson. We're, uh, it's purely speculatory right now because I'm not positive how he evaluates talent. And there are definitely a lot of other positions in, that come into play. Defensive line, because we don't know, at least right now, what they're going to do with Raji. Um, so defensive line is a big one a lot of people are talking about. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if they took an edge rusher at some point again. Because Peppers is really old, and I know they moved Matthews back there, but I also don't know, even if they do bring Nick Perry back, I don't know how much of a long-term, like, we're banking on this guy to be, you know, our starter for the next few years move, that is. In fact, I don't think it's that at all. And, um, you know, the outside chance that that they take um, a tight end in the first couple of rounds, even though they just took one in the third round, like... Um, to, yeah, but Packers have run some two tight end offenses, and I mean not often, but he's not. The, the thing about Rich Rod is he's he's not a stretch the field guy. He's not a burner, and he he's a good possession receiver, I guess. He he had a lot of. Uh, do you do you know? He's got many, really good hands. Do you know how many touchdowns he ended up having? He had quite a few. I think he had like uh, I think it's he tied, a round number. I think it's either six or eight. I think he tied Bubba Franks's. Record, maybe. I could be making that up, dude. But he had a good year. He didn't have a great year. He had a good year, and he's a reliable target for Aaron Rodgers. Um, but imagine a, um, a Greg Olson in that offense. Somebody who can stretch the field. Someone who's 6'5", 6'6", and fast. And 
creates mismatches. Because the Packers didn't have a single... Eight, eight touchdowns it was. Okay. They, and over 500 yards receiving and almost 80 yards. Or, I mean, sorry, almost 80 receptions. That's a good year for a tight end. Or No, 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 almost 60 receptions. Yeah. Um, solid. Yeah, solid year. But, yeah, I could... Packers have taken a few tight ends. Remember, didn't they take DJ Williams out of Arkansas a couple years ago? Three, I think he was like the fifth round, and like he something. seemed like he was really explosive, and, and then he just like stopped, like he just like couldn't even make the team. Right. <laughs> no, I think he got injured and stuff like that, and it just a couple of uh, bad breaks. So, so what do we? Let's just let's do this before we end. Our our positions of need right now. Our, I love New York. Is that, we can't do a single podcast anywhere without a siren. That's authenticity right there. And I want to edit that out so bad. Nah, it just, it just... But I kind of love the fact that it's impossible to, our, to get through. our low-level quality of broadcast. Well, yeah, low-level talent, you get low-level level production value. Like, we, we, you know, that's what you paid for. Or didn't. Or didn't. So... Our posi- you you deem our positions or the Packers' positions of need as what? Um, we already kind of talked about it. Need obviously, I still think tight end. I do think inside linebacker. I just don't think they're going to like make a huge effort to address it. Um, there's so many, but like I, I interior defensive interior. So whether that mean um, defensive lineman or inside lineman. And pass catchers, yeah. So de- that's that's if I could sum it up: defensive interior and pass catchers, whether that be a tight end or a wide receiver, or Matt Forte, or sure, or Matt Forte. Pass targets, talented, you know, borderline unique talents. I don't know why I just took my phone off vibrate. Um, borderline unique Rookie talents move. that catch the football. Doxson's that Sterling Shepard, I think, is that would be in the slot, but a little bit different. But Doxson's like a downfield, like. Field tilting, stretch the field, go up and get it kind of guy. Um, people are saying Hunter Henry, the tight end, is going to be great. You know, one of those guys or defensive interior are to me are the biggest needs. Yeah. And I think the pass I think they all get addressed are, in the draft. Yeah, I think those are guys. They're luxuries that really do improve your team just depth wise and don't put a ton of pressure on Devontae Adams, Ty Montgomery, and those guys to really step up um, because you just add another really good body. This and, might be the first podcast I didn't talk about how bad um, Devontae Adams is. Well, you wrote about it. I know. You really went after him. It was like really it. strong wording. I mean, that was like an attack. It wasn't an attack. It was it was the numbers. It was advanced metrics that showed how bad he was. And I don't dislike him as a person. I've talked to him. I think he's a good guy. I just don't think... I think he was put in a position to fail, and he's just not any good. It's okay that he's not any good. <laughs> Well, man, well, which one is it that he was put in a position to fail, or is it he that he was put he's... in a position to fail because he's not good? Can it be both? <laughs> he can be. A, he can be. I mean, he can a... still be talented, but I mean, I, I guess after <laughs> at some point it would show, right? right? I mean, just like you know what the issue was, we didn't even have the New England game or the Dallas playoff game of 2014 in 2015. Like we didn't have that one game that reminded us, like. We could put up with all this other stuff because we think at some point he could get close to this consistently. We had a game where he was targeted 20 times and didn't... Yeah. Yeah, caught less than a quarter of them or something. 21, yeah. I don't don't know... uh, I I don't know this. And again, I wish I just had the Elias Sports Bureau at my disposal at all times to just say, like, give me this stat. Volume of targets, like, compared to... Um, receiving yards. Like, when you get 21 opportunities, like, it's almost built in you should have about 100 yards receiving, right? He had one touchdown reception last year. One. And it came in the, like, one of the last games of the season. Unless, I mean, he had, did he have one in the Arizona game? The playoff game? I don't even remember. Regardless, he, that's how bad he was. Aaron Rodgers didn't, like, he missed a couple games. I think Devontae Adams missed three games. So you're on the field for 13 regular season games. Your starting quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, is on the field for all of them. And you don't get one. He had ample opportunity. And, okay, that's a different tangent. So you said, what, what did we get off on? What? No, you asked me the positions of need. I said defensive interior and, and pass catchers in any form. 
People yes. that can catch the ball, but more importantly, get open, like skillfully. Yes, I, uh, and it'll all get it will all get addressed in the draft. It's just a matter of where Thompson values each particular player that's available, and in which order they all fall in place. I don't know. I get excited. I'm starting to get excited and do more. This is when I like really start to nerd out after the combine and like where things are going to fall into place. Yeah. Could the Packers trade up? Maybe, but probably not. Who knows? They've done it before. Yeah. Um, are you going to nerd out with Game of Thrones soon or what? Cause I know. Did you see I tweeted at you today? Yeah. I, yeah. I it's hear, coming. I hear winter's coming. Winter is coming. That, that, that you know, one hour Wes Hodkowitz guest spot. Talking almost exclusively Game of Thrones. I might as well just not even show up for that It podcast. debuts the day, the Sunday after the NFL draft concludes. So you better believe that Monday or Tuesday we're taping with Wes, recapping <laughs> in full the season premiere, which oh, is God. I've already read enough spoilers on, and talking about who the Packers drafted. So bear That's with gonna us. It's going to be a four-hour podcast. Yes, it will. And you don't want to be basically you know, absent for three of those four hours. <laughs> I'm not talking about the draft, so do your, uh, do your homework. But uh, no, bear with us this offseason. Uh, a lot of rambling today, um, but good to. Uh, it was good fun. It was good to be back. And uh, you know, we're gonna we'll we'll deliver quality content. Ben Fennel will talk to leading up to the draft. He's been buried in in tape. We've had him on in the past. He worked for uh, NFL Network and ESPN on their college broadcast. So he's just always watching college tape, whether it be through ESPN, you know, in the production truck with those guys for for uh, games on Saturdays or. Uh, and specifically at this time of the year, kind of being almost the right hand man for Mike Mayock, who I think you know, I, he's a, just a draft savant. I mean, he's really good. Like, John I mean, y- you you know, all of these guys are wrong, and because it's really hard to predict these things. And Mel Kiper and Tom McShay and Mike Mayock make a living doing something that's basically impossible to be you know very accurate with. But Mayock's really good. Like, he's one of those guys you learn from. He's like Collinsworth. Like, you listen to him and you learn something. And even if he's wrong about a prospect, you at least feel like you know better. But uh, Ben does a lot of that behind-the-scenes work. We'll talk to him. And, again, uh, I just can't wait to get Wes back on um, in, uh, in coming weeks. So this is an exciting few weeks for me, man. When, like, this it's a great time of the year in April. Um, we're almost there. It's going to start getting warm here because we yeah. actually have spring. Yeah. It's nice. It's weird to see seasons. Unlike like, Wisconsin, where it's just winter and construction. Like Yankees and Mets opening day, like there might be sun, where like it's usually hail or frozen rain yep. at Brewers opening day, at least the past couple of years. I heard I was cheated out of that. You were. Yeah, I talked you to had multiple run, Wisconsin you had a run of it. who said that my only two, I think it was, opening days, uh, no, I might have had three, but all three of them in Milwaukee were like three of the most, you know, undesirable opening days there were. One was like a weird sleet. Yeah, Yeah, that might have been last year. Anyways, you can get us on Twitter, at Alex Patakis, (laughs) at Nick Bornheimer. We've taken a fair amount of your time talking about how good Eddie Lacy looks. Did Did we spend enough time on that? Oh, in the white shirt, right? Right. Shredded? So shredded. Just that that jawline looked really, uh, really jacked. Can't wait for him to show up to camp just looking like a just a beast. Right. And then the force to be right. And then the PED accusations come. And then we've got more to talk about. (laughs) Uh, Until next time, friends. Yes. Two Pack Podcast at Nick Bornheimer, at Alex Patakis on Twitter. Read us, follow us, pack yourself. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If the Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signing. Go to WaukeshaSportsCards.com. Eddie Lacy, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay, Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice. Hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances.